Hello, welcome to The Truths. Whether it's Donald Trump and neo-Nazis and Confederate statues or terror attacks in Barcelona, Europe, extremism is once again dominating the news. Where better to go then for some balanced opinion than Fox News with living Nazi statue Nigel Farage. You are looking live at Barcelona where vigils have been set up following yesterday's deadly attack. ISIS now claiming responsibility. The attack, just one of many that Europe has recently endured over the last uh, few years, we just mentioned eight in three years. So what role does open borders play in the threat of ISIS and terror? It's interesting to see because again, like I know there's probably lots of different things on Fox News, but remember the point of the truth is news analysis. So if you look at the way this news broadcast is working, it's taking the issue of terrorism, it's saying there's been eight in three years in Europe, and then it's allying this story already to borders because that serves uh, a mainstream agenda to, to coin or to at least use a phrase about border control and nationalistic arguments. So like uh, the terrorism in Barcelona, while it's still in that bewildering phrase, uh, phase of grief and confusion, to start to introduce the idea of borders at this point is a good way of determining the likely consequences of, of the terrorism. How much are open borders to blame? I mean, Europe, they have a very different policy than we do here in the US. Yeah, I mean, look, what we've had are failed immigration policies over many years, a total lack of integration of a huge part of the Muslim community with the rest uh, of our towns and cities. Oh God, I didn't know that that was what people said on the news anymore. Like sort of, so that's the way that gets reported: lack of integration. It's weird, isn't it? Because after Brexit, I thought we'd got rid of dear old Nigel Farage, but here he is, looming on the horizon in front of a Westminster backdrop, stirring up hatred abroad, like he's doing a swan song, like he's like the Harlem Globetrotters of hatred, doing exhibition matches of hatred. You've done your job with Brexit, <laughs> now leave everyone alone. No, I could still do a bit more, I could cause some aggravation over there. No, please Nigel, no more colourful ties and monochrome views. And since 2015, Anybody that comes across the Mediterranean and puts a foot on, on the soil of any European country has been allowed to stay. You know, as we speak, there are people landing in Greece, Italy, Spain, and we haven't got a clue who they are. Sure. Have you noticed how jowly these men like Trump and Farage are? They're very jowly, all big jowls hanging down their chins like that. They're so concerned about borders. Why don't they consider having one between their head and their chest? Called a neck. Because we don't have borders. So, I mean, frankly, the whole thing is madness. And this is uh, what brought you to prominence, the Brexit movement in Great Britain. That's right. Thanks for reminding us. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's why we've got to put up with him, the lunatic, because of the Brexit movement, <clears throat> which, by the way, is widely now being sort of analysed and looked at with some sort of regret and confusion by people from across the social spectrum now reviewing whether or not it's likely to meet their fears and their needs. Because I think Brexit, like Donald Trump, are both expressed of anger, rage, the same way as terrorism is. Admittedly, uh, it's happening within the political forum, but it's the same emotion, rage, dispossession, anger, Brexit, Trump, terrorism. Until we find a more appropriate means for expressing these feelings, until we find ways of organising and addressing these feelings, I think you're going to continue to have mad political leaders, mad political outcomes, and more importantly, terrorism. I don't think it can be controlled by those sort of checkpoint gates and barbed wire. I don't think that's going to deal with the source. Normal nations make their own laws, control their own borders, and choose who comes to live, work, and settle in their country. We had surrendered that as a member of the EU. Um, I made it absolutely the central point of the campaign. But you did make it the central point, but it's this complex argument, Nigel, because of things like colonisation, because of things like imperialism, because of things like geography, because of the th things like astronomy, and the fact that the planet is one clear thing. And I ideas such as sovereignty, and borders, and who's allowed to live, and who's allowed to die and who's allowed to earn money and who's not allowed to earn money are just narratives plucked out of the abyss. Uh, what I find, and let me just put it to you, looking at it from this side, what I can't believe in the wake of Barcelona is there is still a sizable chunk of Americans who want to tear down historical statues, seeing these figures as the enemy, uh, whereas it's pretty clear Islamic terrorism is a threat to all of us. What? Sorry, <laughs> That's it. That's curious and in a way helpful for us because it helps us to align these 
two opposing ideas. But I suppose what Nigel Farage stands for is making a particular kind of ethno-nationalism the default position for, in inverted commas, ordinary people. Why would you want to tear down these statues when the real enemy is them, when the real enemy is ISIS? Now, of course, borders and boundaries, I suppose, again, similarly symbolic. The way Nigel Farage talks about them as functional is confusing to me because I think these borders are ideological. I think well, what Nigel Farage wants to say is there is us and there is them. And he wants to make clear lines between us and them. But what's always concerned me is the continuing populist appeal of these ideas when ordinary people will not benefit from the kind of ideas that come at you through Fox News. And the rage that people feel marching under flags of the Confederacy, marching under the swastika, will never be alleviated by the people that say, yeah, you should leave those for those statues up whether it's Donald Trump or Nigel Farage those people want ordinary people to be poor dispossessed and angry they require their anger their anger is the fuel for Donald Trump and Nigel Farage so the fact that they garner their support and harness their support is one of the great sort of paradoxes and continuing bafflements of our time the fact that there's an appetite to keep up statues to dead ideas and to erect borders that won't have any functional meaning but continue to facilitate the dominance of the currently powerful and the people that are applauding it, cheering it, burning torches and waving flags for it are people that are penalised under that system for me suggest there is much education to be done. I don't want to sound like some hippie guy saying those marching ludicrously under tiki torches and Nazi flags need empathy, education and love. And it's not from a woolly place that I suggest that that's precisely what's required. Of course, those actions need to be curtailed and penalised when they occur. But when I watch stuff like Fox News and Nigel Farage, I can't see how any version of condemnation and hatred is going to help this already seething conflagration. True news.